It's time for another round of Hot GPT. And our topic today is, is Gen AI a bubble? All right, ready to go. Start generating. Now, it is a bit ironic that on Pat GPT, we're talking about Gen AI being a bubble. Because clearly, if I've named this entire part of FOMO Sapiens Pat GPT, then I kind of love Gen AI. I love it, but I also, I mean... I, I totally have been talking about the fact it's a bubble. And what I wanted to do was I actually received an interesting email this week. And I was reading about the, the musings of a gentleman called Gary Marcus, who has been talking about, you know, when will this Gen AI bubble burst? Now, obviously, to believe that there's going to be a bubble to burst, you have to believe that there's a bubble. But I'm going to give you some facts right now that Gary brought up. He notes that Sequoia, the venture capitalist fund, says that the industry of Gen AI spent $50 billion on NVIDIA chips, but only brought in $3 billion in revenue so far. That's incredible. Think about that. $50 billion in investment, $3 billion in revenue. Now, of course, there's the future to consider, and it may be that everything just shows up in the future, but still massive capital going in on chips. is kind of mind blowing, right? Like, wow. And so <laughs> think about that. That's one fact. The second fact is that the adoption of Gen AI is actually being slowed down. Corporations are rethinking how quickly they want to adopt it because of fears about privacy and security and regulation. And so that creates a risk factor because that 3 billion, if it doesn't grow that much, then how do you repay the 50? And not only just like repay at one time, but to really generate the returns expected in this like hypey industry, you have to not just generate 50 billion, you got to generate hundreds of billions. So there's a lot of pressure there to justify the enormous valuations of companies in the sector and the gigantic upfront costs for chips, as well as licensing, legal, talent, all this kind of stuff. And by the way, we didn't even talk about the, the little elephant in the room, which is intellectual property. Like LLMs, large language models, are trained on all kinds of public sources of information, things that are copyrighted, like my books, I know, I checked, there's a database. You can see the 10% entrepreneur was used to train, I believe, OpenAI. And, and so like ChatGPT is actually trained on me a little bit. That's so weird. And uh, they did not ask. So, you know, that's kind of rude. But that's the kind of stuff that's going on. And so, <laughs> you know, the thing to think about is how do we, how do we know that this is going to succeed? Like what needs to happen for the Gen AI promise to pay off? And there's three things that Marcus talks about. First of all, they got to find huge problems they can charge a lot of money for, which is hard because of competition, but you know that's what needs to happen. Number two, you got to have a solution to a problem at a reasonable price relative to whatever problem is being solved. And the thing is that the bigger the model and the bigger the problem, then the higher the costs. So that's tricky. And finally, you need customers to feel confident that this thing isn't going to kill them and eat their lives, right? So there's that's a lot. I mean, those are a lot of things that you need to do. And so Marcus kind of ends his analysis by saying that he thinks we'll find out more this year when chat GPT, the, the open AI GPT-5 gets released. And if it's truly mind-blowing, like people, the, the boom will continue. Otherwise, things might slow down. So that's where we are. I have four thoughts on this. I will tell you what I'm thinking. My own patchy PT take right after this break. FOMO. FOMO. All right. The topic today is Gen AI a bubble? Hmm. Well, first of all, I don't think anybody is disputing the fact that there has been a massive amount of interest valuations of companies in the space like OpenAI are crazy high. Companies are throwing tons of money into this, like the IBMs, the Googles of the world. And nobody kind of knows yet what it's going to be, right? Like, what is the payout? That sounds like a bubble. Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean that it's going to pop. Doesn't mean that, you know, we should just stop. But if you think about FOMO and AI together, I mean, AI is like a total FOMO factory. 
You have a bunch of people who are running after something because everybody else is doing it and they think it's going to make them a ton of money or give them power or whatever, but they don't really know how. You have these totally crazy predictions that nobody knows if they'll come true. And what is so interesting is how bubbles just, they come all the time now. And I think it's a combination of, you know, our ability to get so much information. It's social media and Reddit and all these online forums and stuff like that. If you think about it, think about some recent bubbles. You got crypto. Remember Dogecoin? I mean, crypto's kind of back, but like, yeah, is it, you know, is, is it any more real than it was? You got NFTs. Remember those? Remember those? We were all going to be living in the metaverse. Oh, the metaverse too. We had autonomous cars, electric cars. Now it's AI. That's all in the last five years. That's crazy. And there's more. I mean, I could we could keep going, right? Uh, there's there's other things like GameStop. <laughs> Point being, bubbles are just happening more and more in AI. I believe it's a bubble. So yeah. But number two, that doesn't mean that money will not be made. If you had NVIDIA stock and you bought it, you know, a while ago, it's just ridden up. So you can make money. Like the thing I always tell people is the lesson that I learned from crypto. Like I was always a crypto skeptic. I'm like, ah, I'm buying Bitcoin. I don't know what it is. Like I don't really see the use case. I'm not sure. But, it's, you know, I found out a Bitcoin. I, I found about it from friends in Argentina in the year 2012 or something, had I just bought like 10 Bitcoin at 200 bucks a pop, like holy moly. So the thing about bubbles is it's okay to invest a little bit as long as you recognize it's a bubble and try to get out early before the bubble pops. You can still make money on something like this, right? Number three, what is driving all this stuff? Well, part of the thing that we need to do as sensible individuals who know that FOMO is a thing is think about who are the messengers and what are their incentives? So if you didn't see This Is Not Financial Advice, the movie that I was in recently, this documentary about Dogecoin, you can find it online, it's around. And the kind of the, the moral of that story is the people who were the evangelists never actually made money on the Dogecoin, like they wrote it up and down and whatever, but they all became influencers and made money that way, right? They had contracts and followings and stuff like that. So when you hear people, and a lot of people have done this, like a lot of people who were kind of like, their careers weren't really going anywhere, just jumped into AI and were like, became like super evangelists. Are they making money on the AI or are they just making money off trying to sell things to you and, you know, promotions and endorsements and their podcast or whatever, it, it's a thing. So questioning those incentives is really important. And finally, valuation is everything. Like what you buy at and what you sell at, that's all that matters when it comes to investments. So think carefully about that. You know, when you're buying the Nvidia stock, you know, is this a good valuation? Do your homework and get out before it bursts. And I know that's hard, but leave some money on the table just for the certainty of your return. All right, that's my thought. So I guess what I'm saying, if I sum it all up, is yes, it's a bubble, but doesn't mean that it won't, you know, make some people some money or have an impact. Like I'm not saying that AI and Gen AI is not going to have an impact on our world. I just think that it's overpriced. All right, that is my thought. If you have thoughts, you can write me, you can yell at me, you can scream at me, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J McGinnis, on email at Let's Connect at PatrickMcGinnis.com. On Twitter, at PJ McGinnis. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. We're going to talk about Gen AI then too. But until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO Sapiens, and Patch EPT. Stop generating. FOMO. FOMO Sapiens is recorded in New York City. Theme music is by Mike McGinnis, and editing and post-production is by Josh Elstro. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me at FOMOSapiens.com and at PatrickMcGinnis.com. To advertise on FOMOSapiens, reach out to contact at FOMOSapiens.com.